Hey, uh, thank you for tuning in to Local Love. I am Laura and I'm very excited because I have two very special guests with me today. I have Zach Abrams from Vice Royalty and Annika, you may also know her as Alice Ivy, joining me. Thank you for, yeah, coming via video chat to hang out. Hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Pretty good, pretty good. So first of all, congratulations, Annika, on your album coming out. How long have you been waiting for that one? Uh, I mean, how long has it been? Like, it's been like two and a half years since we, I started writing that record. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a moment in my life. <laughs> yeah. And there's probably, I guess, also like a lot goes into that from a manager's point of view too, Zach, all those mm-hmm. hours, staying up late, trying to make sure all the shit behind the scenes yeah, goes ab- seamlessly. A- absolutely. There was many moving parts on this record. Um, I think at the start of the year, Annika and I were both a little bit daunted by how many things were on the to-do list but Mm. it was good to watch them slowly come off and then towards the end uh start to like more rapidly uh those lists shortened and and then all of a sudden it's out yay and do you have like do you both have a favorite track on there or is it you can't pick a favorite i don't know like mine changes every day (laughs) yeah so like i can't really i can't really say what my favorite song is so depends on the mood yeah, it totally does. Like, I don't know. I honestly like that is the truth. Like, I yeah. like sometimes I'll I actually like every now and then I put on the record just because like I feel like it's a nice thing to just be able to put on something that you've put out and worked so hard on and yeah. and you know like I'll listen to it I'll listen to like Sweetest Love a few times and then I'll go all oh, oh, and for you you know like it changes all the time so yeah. Yeah. The, the newer songs, I find, I, because some of those songs we have been um, sitting on for so so long, the the latest ones on the album still feel really fresh to me. So I, I keep listening to All In For You with Nairi, but yeah. um, Don't Sleep as well. I just keep coming mm. back to. Yeah, and I suppose it's kind of like that thing where, like, you obviously have been working on it from a demo perspective and then it changes and then you're listening to all these, like, different versions of mixes and then the master and then you're like, uh, by the time anyone actually hears it out in the real world, you've probably heard it, like, 10,000 times. But anyway, I wanted to, obviously, I want to chat about your music and stuff like that, but the whole purpose of Local Love is to give music artists a bit of insight on how, like, social media sort of works and things that they can be doing, I guess, also while isolating, but just staying active on socials. So I thought, yeah, let's kick it off with um, how have you, for this album, utilised your socials to promote it? Have you done any ads or anything or is it all just sort of, I guess, organic unpaid (laughs) it's like it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mixture isn't it yeah yeah um you know like we've got like the ads that go out which are you know like literally like i feel like the definition of an ad you know it's like here's the link you know here's the the smart link to (laughs) to to the listening platforms here's you know the link to watch the yeah you know what i mean like do you do you feel like icky about ads like do you let someone like zach or someone else handle all that side of it and just like close your eyes <laughs> um in terms of the ads yeah i don't really know like i don't handle that it's yeah. more zach and the label that deals with like that the actual ads yeah, yeah. And, and we tend to not um when it comes to digital advertising we're pretty selective about yeah. what we sponsor and the thing that we've traditionally done is really just push video so mm. every time there's been a new music, new single out, we've just used either like a snippet or a super cut of the video and sponsored that with like an out now message. Yeah. Um, and then for the album, we did a similar thing, but we did more of a, um, we, could, we did like a Vox Pop with all of the feature artists each saying what track they were on on the record. And we sponsored that for a few days. Um, and then one or two key moments throughout the campaign, we straight up just sponsored posts. Um, mm. I, th- I think it was, what did we sponsor, Annika? Like the Out Now post for the album or the pre-order yeah. for the album and maybe I think, one article or two? Yeah, I think like a really interesting point on that is like, you know, like using specific articles and, you know, things and like directly targeting them to certain audiences. Like I remember I got hit up a, a couple of weeks ago um, with like Zach just like emailed me and he was like, oh, like some 
Austrian newspapers written about you. Can you can you transfer it and can you can you translate it and can you like can you um can we can you pick a key quote that we can you know use to like sponsor you know the audience in your audience potential audience in Austria you know that yeah. kind of thing. It's yeah. like once you find something, then you can like specifically target direct yeah. audiences. That's a good example. That was just like a real on the fly one um, that we weren't anticipating and then thought, okay, here's a real opportunity to get new fans online in a specific market. And then a couple other things, just, you know, we, we read all the reviews and interviews and one or two really shined through as being like, well, this is a really great one. Let's put a little spend on it for two, three days and make sure more, more people see it. Um, but generally speaking, I'd say like 80% of the things that you post are just organic reach. Yeah. And I think that's like, um, like with doing little ads here and there of a couple of days with a little bit of budget, I think making it seem more organic is nice. Like, especially when it comes from a music artist, because I feel like there's obviously that somewhat barrier. Like if you switch from being super personable and, you know, people relating to you and that's why they're engaging with your content, then all of a sudden you've got this real dry, boring ad. Mm. They don't feel as connected. So I think that's pretty good strategy you got going there. <laughs> and so you do have like a lot of feature artists on this record. Did you have to like negotiate something to make sure everyone posted or you didn't really care or was it sort of, yeah, was there a bit of a thing to make them push it? Um, oh, I'll let you in. Well, you I, I, was, I was gonna say it wasn't um, contracted. Yeah. Um, you, I think, we provided um, all of the feature artists on the record with a timeline of when their songs were coming out. And if they were singles, um, those artists and their managers, and in some cases their labels, were very across what that release timeline was and kind of made space to, to support our, um, our messaging on their own socials. Otherwise, we just used the old, you know, tag them in, in various things. And, you know, sometimes people are more inclined to reshare um, stories or, or posts that they've been tagged in just willy nilly, as opposed to trying to lock them into a, a specific time to post. Yeah, it probably goes hand in hand, I guess, with what your whole vibe is, Annika. Like your record, it kind of feels like a whole group of pals, like, working on music together and so rather than like something a little more detached where it's just you've grabbed this artist because they are a good vocalist and they're on your track like there's this real kind of nice friend vibe to it all yeah and I feel like I, I've you know like Zach and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago like I feel like you know this record was written all around the world it was written in so many different situations and so many writing rooms and, you know, uh, there are so many stories behind every song. And so, like, each specific song itself, like, when it came down to, like, creating content, you know, I did this thing where I posted before the record came out, posted about every sing a story about every single song, uh, like an interesting fact kind of thing. And, like, going through, literally going through, like, the archives, like, my Instagram story archive and, like, my camera roll archive of all this content that we had just for being in the writing room with people because in the writing room you know like always like so much weird shit always happens and it's so fun it could be so funny and um and yeah like it's pretty awesome having that organic organic content and then you know like tagging the artist and like because it's kind of like your friends and it's like oh remember that time we went to karaoke the night before we tracked the vocals till i find it you know like they're part of it too. And so, yeah, I guess like having a more friendly organic way of like doing social media has like made them inclined to sharing it a little bit more. Yeah. And definitely like far less dry than just giving them like their album or single artwork and, and or, or some kind of a, a generic blurb and asking them to share that. Um, <clears throat> people liked to share that um, behind the scenes content as well. Yeah, has it always been something that's always been on your mind of like taking photos while you're in the moment and doing things or now with like, you know, pushing your music or getting prepared to push it, is it something that's sort of in the back of your mind 
to always be I, finding content? I feel like it never, I mean, yeah, totally. Like literally I feel like all the time I'm always like at the start of the week, I'm like, this is, I can't believe I'm having this conversation about like social media, like <laughs> into this depth. But literally like at the start of each week, I'm like, okay, what can I post this week? And it's not like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I have this like really sick photo that I think will do really well. It's like, okay, like what content haven't we posted yet? Like what is something that we could be talking about? And like I feel like you always need to like constantly like, you know, like Zach's always on Twitter. Like <laughs> you kind of always have to just be up to date with like everything that's going on because like there can be something that you can just grab and like post about, you know, and it works. But yeah. then, yeah, like I feel like in the studio, I feel like now I will totally have it on my mind to like be like, okay, maybe I should get something. But like. To be honest, like when the record was coming together, like I wasn't thinking about shooting videos, you know, it just happened. Yeah, which is cool because you also have like a bit of a bank, it seems, of like pictures of you as a kid, <laughs> which seemed to like, because I saw like you posted about um, you had like a picture of you as a kid on the phone or with a phone. Yeah. yeah, which you like tied into your thing. And I'm like, do you just know that you have those photos or do you like... Well, yeah, I mean, like, Zach and I are always constant, like, constantly finding content and, like, that was originally supposed to be one of the single artworks and so, and we both agreed that it was such a great photo and so, like, you know, like, I was like, well, you know, that post is so good, like, it's such a nice photo, um, I'm on the phone, like, what can I, you know, maybe I can somehow link that with, like, you know, getting chart you know getting on you know getting chart the, the 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 record charting in the arias you know like on the aria chart so like i guess always just thinking about how the messaging can align with the content that you have um is a good habit to be in yeah because it seems it seems natural and it seems it. fun and like relatable so it's really good yeah yeah um, but yeah, I feel like most of the time it's literally just like done on the fly though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And how, how do you think like releasing music would be if there wasn't socials? And I guess like Zach, you have like a strong PR background and obviously social media marketing and everything has really sort of shifted the way PR is because it's in your hands in a way as a music artist, like yeah. to push yourself. So yeah. Do you think, what would it be like if you couldn't? post on socials i don't know i I can't imagine i i feel like instagram in particular but all of the social platforms to a degree have enabled artists to create and communicate their branding to, to people much more effectively um, I suppose in the past we would be just relying on interviews and print media and maybe online press, um, you know, radio interviews and the like. And and now I guess like we, we can have these like central um, depositories of branding with loads of visual content and video content and a little bit of copy thrown in as well that's const that's it, it's a constant um touchstone for anybody who's half interested in an artist can just click on and and get a pretty solid understanding of who they are and where they fit in the landscape instantly yeah. um I, I the other thing that comes to mind is just with with um like direct to customer sales, like the, like the pre-order on the album, for instance, I don't know how we would have been able to do that um, without social media. I, th I think in the past people probably relied pretty heavily on email marketing, which is something that we do, but it's only a small part of, of the marketing mix. Um, and otherwise, I guess, traditional advertising, people used to take out um, ads on television and stuff to try to yeah. sell records. And, um, now you know we kind of operate on a one story is is potentially one sale one pre-order kind of a kind of a strategy and and just try to push that message constantly which which is really where the vast majority of the album pre-orders came from i think from people swiping up or or clicking through yeah which is cool do you um do you have a pixel set set up for your ads Annika's labels run pixels on everything that she does. Um, yeah. And then we can obviously um, retarget them with, with those kind of sponsored posts, like the out and out things as well. And yeah, then... which is a good tactic. I like to think of it like a little stalker 
follows you around and is like, I know you like this, so here and, you go. Yeah, You're gonna like this. Exactly. And 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 we've got the the pixel running on the official site as well. Yes. Um pretty yeah. nuts how it works like when you you know think about how that kind of stuff works like you know this morning like i was you know literally just googling electric blankets because i want to <laughs> buy an electric blanket and now my whole feed is filled with bed bath and table um ads you know <laughs> like i know it's hectic i bought a pair of slippers and like i bought the slippers and now all i get is slipper ads <laughs> i'm like i got them it's okay but i, I also think that like like, yeah, my boyfriend, he hates ads. And I'm like, it's like having a personal shopper who goes out there and, like, finds you all the stuff that you would like or, like, they know that you like Alice Ivy's music. So they're going to remind you that, like, the album's out. Just in case you forgot, it's it's out now type thing. Yeah, so. exactly. And people need those reminders. I think that, like, social media and just the the sheer volume of media that people are exposed to in general is like a gift and a curse because we can reach people on so many um more platform platforms than we used to be able to but on the other hand everyone is like quite immune to ads and quite fatigued by them so there are you know just because we have six thousand or seven thousand fans on a page doesn't mean that they are constantly thinking about us or that we're even coming up in their feed so like being able to to retarget them on all of these platforms i think does work and and if people do unfollow you as a result like they are definitely in the minority and it doesn't really have an, too much of a negative effect on the rest of your community yeah like they might not really be the type of people that you want following you or they're just following you to try get you to follow them back type of thing so i don't even understand that whole like <laughs> following follow back thing like i remember i remember was was that the original way how you used yeah. to get like, was it hashtag followers follow for follow yeah <laughs> that was like kind of before my time before i was like really like really super into instagram like yeah, yeah. And it's been something that like I've been talking again in at RMIT about as well as like, you know, posting about stuff that actually matters to you. So like with Black Lives Matter or like stuff with COVID or a charity or whatever, but also not being scared to lose followers over it. Because if you really stand for it and believe in it, then and someone unfollows you because of it, then are they really the type of people you want following your page anyway? So. I think yeah yeah exactly i think that um those communities have a way of kind of just defining themselves to a degree and if people don't like an artist because they've got political leanings or they want to talk about non-music related stuff they they'll just tune out and that's ultimately i guess that means like the brand is not for them well exactly and you want to connect with your audience and have stuff that you have in common and all of that but um do you, uh, do you think you're going to get on TikTok or Twitch at all either of you are you on TikTok or Twitch where do we follow <laughs> I have a silent TikTok account and uh -huh. I have a and I have a I have a Twitch account um I use I I was you know like I guess like going into lockdown um I've had I've had a couple of things stream over twitch tiktok i look like i'm not gonna lie i would say that like half of my day is spent on social media and the other half is attempting to write music and so <laughs> like for me like i am on tiktok i follow some really amazing funny people on a tiktok but like i just can't do another thing it's like no, it I'm, seems like a lot of work I, like I can't like I I look like it's funny and I appreciate it but I just like I would so much rather just like actually having the time to be because you only have 24 hours in a day and it's like <laughs> if you're gonna sort out you know like if you if you're gonna sort out your other socials like it takes up so much time and I'd rather spend that writing music yeah for sure that's my call <laughs> what about you yeah. Zach are you on on anything secretly no, um, I'm obviously aware of TikTok and um, I do see, you know, a lot of the spillover content onto Instagram and, and Twitter and the other platforms. Um, I think it, I think that some platforms lend themselves to a certain type of artist or a certain genre of music more than others. Um, and I think like for acts that are starting out now, um, maybe starting from scratch with TikTok as like a primary platform might be a good idea. Um, when you have so many existing um, 
platforms that you use and for me as a business um i've always used twitter primarily and i think that that's a lot of people who work in media who work in the music business um journalists and and, and so forth it tends to be more um behind the scenes focused and, yeah. and i, I kind of get everything um for my business and my personal profile and brand out of that with a with a little bit of a combination of, of instagram and face and lesser of less of facebook still and then for annika i mean her artist project really began in an era where facebook pages were still very relevant and then kind of coincided with almost the be the beginning of instagram taking off for musicians so that's become the primary platform and we just kind of continue to to maintain that tr trying to make the switch and spread everything too thin um because i it did it, it is definitely like you know a case for saying don't take something on if you're not going to do a really good job of mm. it and we spend a lot of time perfecting instagram and, and using everything Instagram adds to its platform to um, benefit our campaign and, and our marketing needs. And if you're not, if we don't have the capacity to have a really great TikTok account, it's probably at the moment, just, you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't mean much that we're not, not necessarily using it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it's questionable whether it's going to like, I mean, like, I don't know, like literally getting home I was like listening to ABC News in the car and like apparently Donald Trump is now saying that he's going to ban TikTok in the US and so like yeah. yeah I think that's like um what we always get taught is like you can't put all your eggs in one basket so to speak like you can't just rely on e well I guess email marketing they're your email contacts so you kind of have a bit more control on that but like with social media if something goes down that's it like you know, people get kicked off Instagram all the time because of their stupid yeah. rules. So imagine if, yeah, you just lost everything overnight. Yeah. And you and, didn't have anything else. <laughs> and yeah, I think that it's, it's interesting now that we are like, we're a few generations of social media into it. And already some of these platforms have either completely shut down um, or been sort of fallen off the bandwagon to the point that they aren't effective anymore and i think that 10 years ago um we would have definitely still been talking about soundcloud as like a major platform for music discovery um just just prior to that still talking about myspace as being you know the first artist community kind yeah. of page or, or an, an individual website and then um in that period of time Facebook came along, became unequivocally the most popular one in the world, and now is kind of talked about as a very secondary kind of a platform that isn't as lively as Instagram or TikTok or you yeah. know what was the other what was the other video one that predated TikTok that came they in? had um there were vines, vines and then yeah. TikTok TikTok was originally musically so yeah. it yeah it was just for karaoke style. <laughs> videos yeah but it's funny that you say like um facebook is not you know the leader anymore because it still has like two billion users and yeah. one billion active users where instagram i think doesn't hit the billion mark i think it was like 600 million instagrammers so yeah. I, I guess it's like different audience older demographic now sticking on their yeah facebook yeah, but, it, exactly and maybe it's serving more of facebook serving more of a uh, of a purpose for other things for like n you know c connecting with family and news and or stuff even like groups that. like um groups are such a huge way to that like facebook utilizes its platform so like i'm in a facebook group for plants and it's all about crazy indoor plant people or like the community um there's one facebook runs themselves or there's heaps of really cool music ones too and i think that's probably where facebook is going to go so if people are going to use facebook i think using it for groups is a good way whether it's building this special community around your music or like maybe it's a group of artists as well and you just yeah. like reach your audience that way or i think um zach ages ago when i did my thesis we talked about um facebook really being like a website and i yeah. think that's really what it is like sharing those events and like when your music is out but not necessarily like all that personal fun stuff that you do on insta yeah I exactly mm. yeah we use facebook the uh, of the platforms we do use 
I'd say we use Facebook and Twitter about as much as each other. And we tend to just put the biggest announcements on Facebook page. Um, yeah. But Instagram is the one that we use daily. Yeah, for sure. And I think, yeah, like, Annika, you were saying you're super busy all the time. Like you'd like you spend a lot of time on TikToks and writing music. Do you um do you use like anything to schedule your content, or do you let Zach sort of take over and pretend to be you sometimes <laughs> with posting content? Uh I mean, like generally, I'll like if I have an idea, I'll usually be like, "Hey, do I sound like an idiot if I post <laughs> this?" So I'll send it to Zach. And yeah. he'll, and then I'll be like, okay, I'm going to roll it out at 6 p.m. I don't know, generally, like, I mean, like, when it comes to, like, big releases, like, Zach will, like, help roll over, you know, like, the covers and, like, yeah. the, the cover photo on Facebook and, yeah, you know, like, that get boring admin all shit. The brand and, stuff. And, help, yeah. and help with the messaging. But, yeah. like, generally, I kind of do most of it myself, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Annika pretty much does all of her own posting and we do most of it live, to be honest. We don't use yeah. any um, scheduling software or anything. I, don't, like I couldn't that. even tell you a scheduling software. I don't even know that existed that way. Oh, uh, yeah. You should check out. My favorite is Latergram. So, like, I, on a, I don't know, Sunday or a Monday, I just spend, like, an hour scheduling all my content. So then I just don't have to worry about it. I'm like, eh, yep, done. And then I'm it always checking it, but I just can't be... Stuff. yeah or i get yeah. too excited and then i want to share it straight away and then it's like you know 10 a.m and no one's on socials so i've just wasted my what, great post <laughs> tell you what's the worst i was thinking about this the other day i was like this is honestly like the like probably the thing that i spend the most on whenever i do a post is getting tags on facebook like uh, getting like the tags correct on Facebook, like Facebook tagging is so hard. You know, like looking for like specific artists that have their usernames as oh, like that tag. as like as like yeah. as like you know like oh like I, I I know boy who features on Don't Sleep like their handle is not your boy, but like it's like spelt weird and it's just like trying to tag that and like trying to tag MB on 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 um on Twitter like their their Twitter handle is different. I don't know. It's just yeah. Like <laughs> I did a whole thing. I did a whole thing on that because that stuff drives me insane, especially when like someone doesn't have a lot of followers or has a really common name. Yeah. Like I talked about how like you have to make it the same on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere if you can, and maybe a slight variation of an underscore if you have to. But like people can't find you by typing your name. They use yeah. that handle tag type thing, and so. Yeah, just make it simple because otherwise, yeah, you might tag the wrong person and then you look stupid and yeah. so do they. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really hard. I think um, it's become with everyone, essentially everyone, consuming music on digital um, service platforms, providers like Spotify and Apple Music and stuff these days, it's all the more important to have a unique name because when you're putting music out, the amount of times we have to even get artist um, tags corrected in track titles um, and, and that kind of oh thing. Oh, my God. Even, though, even when we have provided the correct profile link for the artist, um, it has a, a way of becoming um, attached to the wrong person in the back end. Oh, um, no. So the, the like, less generic your name and yeah. handle, the better. Uh, and that consistency is really important. I think we have we have consistent handles on everything now. We're just Alice Ivy Music. I'm pretty sure Al I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Facebook is still Alice Ivy Tunes. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, after this chat, you're gonna go and fix that, aren't you, Zach? <laughs> I, if, if it is, it must have been taken because <laughs> that sounds like a, a creative um, variation. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's which maybe you should change. I think you can have a full stop, so maybe you should put just like dot music, so you can get rid of the tune. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's there's my tip. I'll I'll charge you later for it. <laughs> but let's do some quick fire questions now, <laughs> so you both can answer them, and you got to say the first thing that sort of comes to your head. You ready to go? Had a drink? Yeah. Okay. Insta stories or TikTok? Insta stories. Ooh. Favorite person on Twitter? Oh. Can't be yourself, Zach. I know you want to be Twitter famous. <sighs> this is um, a very quick guy. Okay. 
Doug, what's his last name? <laughs> Don't say his last name. On the <laughs> no, I won't say his last name. Actually, he's the first person I thought of as well. <laughs> All of the celebrities that I follow, my friend Doug is probably yeah, Zach's the, friend the Doug. funniest. I think if there was a um, like a data app that that showed me who uh, whose tweets I've liked the most on Twitter over the you know ten odd years I've been on the platform, it would be him. I, yeah, Doug, and I also really appreciate Sarah Thompson's yes. uh, Tomo's uh, Twitter as well. It's very I, real. I agree. Cool. And Twitch, going to use it or leave it to the gamers? I think oh, yeah. the, the time and a the place. There'll be, some, there'll be, I think, particularly with maybe with um, production masterclasses or the making of the next record or, yeah, that'd be uh, cool. you know, depending on how much longer the lockdown goes um other kind of like competitions meet and greets things like that um it, there's definitely a place for it we got two more left so face face i can't even talk anymore <laughs> oh facebook dead or still cracking still cracking but Hanging in there. only selectively i agree with you on groups i think community groups are really cool i think messenger is still a go-to and yeah look i i use i'm in a lot of industry groups um artist management groups i find them incredibly useful for contact sharing and and best practice and knowledge share um in terms of wall posts i i think that they should just close that that they should just archive that that's done I do like my war post reminders from 2009, though, that I get, like, every second day where it's, like, you posted some weird shit on, like, your high school friend's wall, you know? It's, like, those I, kind of reminders are funny. <laughs> I just, I, I just um, like, shake my head at, like, the early Facebook memories that are just, you know, before Messenger existed and it's just somebody writing on my wall saying, hey, man, are you going to the workers' club tonight? Yeah. And I just think... <laughs> We really used to use Facebook like this. This is I know. I looked back at some of mine and I'm like, this doesn't actually make sense unless I'm talking to someone. <laughs> or I was using it like a Twitter forum where I would like just Facebook all my really bad thoughts. Like, this is <laughs> yeah. like that. Oh, high school. Um, hashtag or no hashtags? No, no hashtags. hashtags. <laughs> Thank I hate you. Them. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like the, well, I don't like them, but they're a good way of helping find content. I don't like it when you have like 1 million hashtags, but if you can do it, like I do it as like a separate comment and then I put the little tag emoji. Okay, so it like yeah. looks cute. And then it's just a couple of like decent ones. So if someone was like searching yeah. yes, social media marketing tips, it would yeah come up but not if you're just gonna go personal holiday follow, follow, yeah yeah none of that hashtag live laugh love oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we'll hashtag this episode <laughs> <laughs> my favorite <laughs> yeah um so i'm gonna wrap things up soon i just want to know what has been your best and most memorable memorable post on any platform oh you can both pick one I there's been so many though like that are so like so good i don't know like i'm trying to think of do you want to do best top three <laughs> yeah I, I can think of a few i mean honestly drawing on very recent stuff i mean i i know i just said facebook um posts were kind of dead um but when the aria chart positions came out mm. last week and, and when um uh annika's album was released uh you know each of those posts got like almost 200 likes on, on my personal page and that's probably the most life my facebook has seen in the last, <laughs> the last three years so it's a little bit back from the dead um i kind of think of instagram posts and tweets when i think of my my favorite things um my my recent most liked Instagram post 
was a completely on the fly one when Annika and I were at Melbourne airport about to fly to <laughs> New Zealand, I think. And I was wearing a, um, ad- like a pink Adidas track suit, like top and bottom. And there's a pair of wings painted on the wall next to Hungry Jack's in, in, at, at Melbourne airport. And I posed with really um, gaudy sunglasses on and headphones. And I was, I was literally coming up with the caption as the plane was taking off. So I knew that I had to think really quickly, otherwise my post wasn't gonna go live. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we decided to go with something, after consulting with Annika, decided to go with something <laughs> that was um, like really like, it'd be, I, I used a hashtag, I used hashtag Ibiza on it actually. <laughs> um, but uh, I wrote some kind of like fake I- inspirational quote mixed with um, fully sick beats or something like that. I'm like, totally going to find this and make sure that there's a link to it for everybody. Well, the best thing about it was that I didn't know how it was performing until we'd landed. Like maybe it wasn't even New Zealand, it might have been the States because it was like a long flight wherever we were going. So I didn't get an update on it until many hours later. And it was like, this is over 200 likes. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but I didn't to know it was that funny that's so funny they have um internet on planes now so you can <laughs> check it while you're in the air exactly i think so, like yeah. yeah i think like my most i don't know like i remember like um like i remember <laughs> this is such a like it's deep in a podcast so <laughs> <laughs> like we're, we're deep in a podcast right now but i remember like at the time billy eilish was out like a few years ago for for her tour um uh like uh, her last tour like everyone was posting photos with Billie Eilish or like at everyone was posting photos of being at the Billie Eilish show um and I I actually supported Billie Eilish the first time she had ever come to Australia on tour and like so we were hanging out a lot and um I posted a photo of like Billie and I just hanging out in the green room just chilling out and like that just went crazy like everyone was just like what the fuck like what and it's just like oh you know like it was literally just like three years ago you know like it's pretty it's amazing how stuff like that happens yeah and I think also well people like fangirl like crazy you know Mm. like they see you hanging out with someone I even think like when I was um yeah planning to chat with you tonight like I saw a friend who I talked to a little bit like sharing your album and stuff but like you know from back home middle of nowhere Queensland and I'm like oh yeah I'm talking to her tonight (laughs) and it's just that like yeah you know people think you're real cool but like Billy would just be a person you know to you yeah yeah Yeah. and like yeah I feel like it's it's been really nice sort of um yeah I feel like you know the Aria thing was a pretty big post for me too like that was like kind of like a real moment where it's like you know for me it was like yeah like I've been quiet I mean we've been busy it's been a busy two years we've played so many shows but like it's it's like I've been quietly working on this record and now the record's out and you know it's getting received pretty well and being able to actually post a chart like for some people that's just like everything and you know like that just like even like it sounds stupid when you talk about music like this like I hate this really (laughs) but like also like the people that's you know see an aria chart like it's like a big deal to people you know like yeah there are still those things and i think like the, it's like whether it's a photo of you and billy eilish now that she's like an internationally recognizable star mm. or it's a photo of something that's in the collective consciousness like an aria chart it's it's just like um such a powerful communic like form of communication there's no nuance Mm. it's just here's me with this incredibly famous person the the world's biggest it girl or and here's me i'm in a thing that you've heard about even if you only have a like cursory knowledge of music you know what the aria chart is Mm. yeah and i think people just love seeing accomplishments like they love to see you doing amazing things and whatnot so i think people can get right around that the other thing i was going to say when you mentioned um a people loving accomplishments is why it's very important to write congratulations in as many comments as possible to really get the algorithm going because <laughs> facebook and instagram algorithms love reading the word congratulations oh that's a good tip i didn't yeah. know that so... it, it, machine learning thinks you've just had a baby, you've just got engaged, you've just got married, you just something, you just got a new job, you just put your album out and it just says, better show this to everyone in their feed. 
That's a good tip. So I'm going to make everyone, every time I put a podcast episode, everyone needs to write congratulations on the new episode. And then exactly. it'll go like crazy. You can do an experiment. Yeah, that's a good, I'll test it out. I'll let you know how I go. <laughs> and so with us going into like stage four crazy lockdown stuff, what are your, this is the last question, so make it a good answer, but what are some tips for music artists to stay active on their socials, creating content? Have you got any cool content ideas? You don't have to give all your secrets away in case you want to like keep some for yourself, but. Well, what, I feel what, like. Go on, you go first. Oh, <laughs> no, I was going to say like, I feel like it's like, if you go for uh, like oh uh, i don't know like i was gonna say like anything is content like literally anything is content like you could go to the cafe and like <laughs> the person the barista will fuck up your name on the coffee cup like you know like you see the weirdest like number plate like literally anything is content and so like just keep an open mind <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think I just think these artists, whether it's Afir or it's um, Eilish Gilligan, I, there's so many artists just taking everything online right now with respect to their songwriting, with covers, with how they're uh, what plugins they're using. There, there's obviously um, a very big captive audience at home, and people have um, you know spending more time on their devices than ever. And and this is a good time for artists to be talking about stuff they don't normally talk about as well, like what Netflix shows they're watching. Sarah Thompson has been talking about Nashville for about the, the, last, <laughs> the last three weeks, and I you know that's not unusual for her. She talks about TV quite a, quite a lot on her Twitter, but for other artists, like you know, let's hear what books you're reading. Let's hear what films you're watching. Let's see the photos of your garden or, or whatever it is and, and really use the platform for, I think, what it's always um, worked well for is a, a window into somebody's real life. Yeah. So no secrets, no filter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good that's a good tip. So I hope we see some artists who listen to this and then take some of what they've learned from you, some tips. Did you ever think, Annika, that you would be a social media pro giving advice and tips on what to post? <laughs> I am definitely not a social media pro. I'm just going to say that out loud. Um, no, like, I don't know. I feel like you just get used to it. It's part of your job now as an artist. So Yeah. Yeah, and I think you both, though, like you say you're not a pro, but, like, even, Zach, like, your own um, presence on social media and who you are, like, you have your own personal brand and same with you, Annika, like, with Alice Ivy, everything you do on social media and just, like, you as your person like you can easily identify that it's you and I think that I think having that in mind just being true to yourself and having a sense of what your brand is on social media because I guess you might curate some stuff not to be on there and I think just sticking with it is what you got to do yeah exactly yeah, I understand Cool. Well, thanks everyone for listening to us. I'll put all the links to Alice Ivy's new album so you can listen to that and follow Ooh. Zach and Annika on all their socials. I think Vice Royalty will get their Instagram Hashtag up and running follow soon. To follow. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, follow them, exactly. they may follow you. Or, <laughs> or you can just put a story up, buy the album, the vinyl, or whatever you want, share a story, tag Alice Ivy, and she might even share it in her story. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thank you very much. See ya.